Okay, I would like to do a video about this man on screen, Ron Little, and he is the president and CEO of Wolfton. And they're making a lot of promises, a lot of things to the local people here in this area. I am in Patton, Maine on Main Street, right here, a few miles away from where these uh, guys want to mine. And they're saying a lot of things, oh, we're going to um, make it a real clean thing. It'll be really good for the area. We're going to see about that. You see, um, Ron Little actually mined in Africa. I wasn't really even aware of it. I saw some of the interviews and it didn't register in my brain. <laughs> but I started to look into this thing of what, okay, he mined in Africa. What were they doing in Africa? Did, it, did they do a good job in Africa? Found some rather disturbing things. And we're going to look into this. But first, I'm going to show you the proof that he did, in fact, mine in Africa. Okay, let me just play a little bit of this. Let me get my headphones on. So we're trying to explore it while we're trying to build it. We're the first guys back in Maine, so we're actually pre-permitting to show people that, you know, this is, Maine is open for business. Meanwhile, we try to make it bigger. Okay, fantastic. Look, um... We'll get back to the thing of him trying to make it bigger. See, uh, again, oh, we're just going to be mining this Picket Mountain. No, they want to do huge areas of northern Maine. They're not going to stop with just one area. They're going to destroy the wilderness up here. Okay, that kind of gives people a bit of color to what you're trying to do. Uh, where were you before before you turned up here three years ago? Uh, Wolf, uh, I was with Orzone uh, as really the founder back in, been so long ago now, I forget, like 1996. And, uh, you know, within a year ended up in Burkina Faso and never had been. And we turned Orzone into, I'd say, one of the better success stories in West Africa um, and uh, had fun there. Okay, so he had fun in, in Burkina Faso. Okay. Um, yeah, well, let's see what the articles say here. A review of African political economy. Here, this is roape.net. The mines make us poor. Large-scale mining in Burkina Faso. This is March of 2019, so not that long ago. Um, you'll see here that, uh, um, well, I'll, I'll just show you this. This is Orzone right here. This is their website, orzone.com, and it says May 22nd, 2017, a few months before Wolfton purchased uh, the property up here at Pickett Mountain. The board of directors, the board and Mr. Ronald Little have agreed that he will step down as president, chief executive officer, and director of the company affected today. The board would like to thank Ron for all his efforts, and the board wishes him well in his future endeavors. Mr. Patrick Downing, who is currently executive chairman, has been appointed president and CEO of Orzone. This is Patrick Downey right there. Okay, he's now the president of the company that Ron Little founded. All right, so he was there in Africa. And um, right here it says the mines make us poor. So this is after uh, Ron Little had left. But this was certainly going on in his time. Let's read this article here very quickly. Artisanal gold mining has a long history in Burkina Faso. They, they do it by hand. They basically dig holes down in. They drop people down in. It's a terrible process. I mean, you can look at some of the stuff on it. Let me just show you here really quickly. Um, very danger, dangerous. Dangerous. Uh, and it's been done for a long time over there. Uh, let me just bring this over here. And right here's a um, thing about it. They, I mean, they're doing drugs. They're doing all kinds of things. Uh, it's horrible. And uh, they die in it, and they're they're just barely making any money. They they actually showed. Uh, let me just click on this real uh -huh. quickly to get through the advertisement. Sorry about that. Good old YouTube. But you can see the conditions are absolutely terrible. Um, doing this stuff all by hand. Um, not going to play the video, but they go down into these. 
little small holes like that and they're down there chipping the rock away and then they have to bring the rock up and they um, they find the gold in it here this young man's talking about that they take like he said tramadol which is a synthetic opiate type of drug and it helps them to feel brave when they go down in so drugs and the people are so poor they barely have anything um, here they are they're working the the gold by hand they're, or the rocks by hand they're smashing it and then they crush it into dust um, and then this is the worst one right there he's mixing the dust with mercury and then after they do that then they burn the mercury back here just a minute or two right there's the mercury mixed with the gold dust and then they burn it over a fire until it turns into just gold the mercury burns away real safe and I mean they're doing this for just a few grams of gold they're barely making any money I mean it's absolutely terrible here they're showing the medical clinic people just getting sick all the time um, and you say but that's not the industrial stuff the industrial is better but why is this huge push for gold over there see the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil first Timothy chapter 6 verse 10 and you can see that plainly here they're talking about the toxic runoff going into the rivers and lakes and, and the water's no good anymore and this guy's trying to you know grow tomato plants and things and not sure if it's going to work a school teacher here and he's concerned about uh, the children most of these children are going into the gold mines and he said that you know they've destroyed basically the culture over there in Africa it's just heartbreaking but uh, artisanal gold mining has a long history in Burkina Faso Burkina Faso but industrial gold mining is, is experiencing a recent boom in the country since 2007 for example 15 industrial mines have opened stop there for just a minute what are these 15 industrial mines? Names of mining companies operating in Burkina Faso. Just a quick little Google search, and right there you see Ore Zone right down here. So, yeah, they are involved in it. Um, the research group Glocon has released a report which puts the views of those affected by large scale gold mining in Burkino, Burkina Faso at the center of the analysis. For Ruipe. Net, the authors discuss the report's findings by Mirka Schaefer, Frenza Dreschel, and Bettina Engels. Gold mining has both a long history as well as a recent boom in Burkina Faso in the form of artisanal mining locally known as or palage, um, if I'm pronouncing that right. It began long before colonization. Industrial mining, however, is a new phenomenon since 2007. 15 industrial mines have opened. Currently in 2019, 11 gold mines and one zinc mine are in operation. And exploration and exploitation licenses for industrial mining have been issued for almost half the surface of the country. While mining companies and the government pro promise jobs and development, look at this, what is the actual experience of the people living close to the mines? The research group, uh, Global Change Local Conflicts, have released their most recent report, Country Report, which puts the views of those affected by the industrial mines in Burkina Faso at the center of the analysis. The analysis reveals that the perspe perspective of the people living close uh, to the mines differs from the ones <clears throat> one of the companies and government. Typical. While there are few advantages, mainly certain investment in infrastructure, there are neg many negative impacts, including the devastation or devastating loss of livelihood. <clears throat> which again this goes directly against God's word people are supposed to have ancestral homelands and you're not supposed to take those from them um, God has separated the children the sons of Adam into different bounds of their habitation and you're not supposed to remove those boundaries <clears throat> so this is in direct violation of God's law Loss of livelihoods. The most re relevant negative impact of industrial mines concerns the loss of livelihoods. Burkina Faso's rural, po rural population mainly depends on subsistence agriculture and livestock farming. Artisanal gold mining is another important source of income. 
A new mine is installed on land that was previously used for farming, cattle herding, or artisanal mining. Uh, many residents are impeded from pursuing their former livelihood activities as they have lost their fields and or are denied the possible possibility to engage in artisanal mining. <clears throat> now look at this. This is important because they did this in Africa. Ron Little had a part in this and what, you know, Orzone, now it's Wolfton with him, and they want to do it here. I will promise you that they want to do it here. I'll show you the proof here as we continue. The expropriation of people from their land for the purpose of mining is legally possible in Burkina Faso, and mining companies are obliged to comp compensate the residents for their loss. Come to the area here in northern Maine. Oh, I'm sorry. We really made it miserable for the people who are living here. They try to sell. Wolfton can snatch up all the properties or just come in and say, okay, we're going to force you off your land now that you have some really good rock there and, and things. There's some good minerals on your property. They're going to do it here. They're absolutely planning to do it here. Don't even tell me that they're not. But despite international standards which recommend providing substitute cultivation areas, land is nearly always compensated by payments. While these should serve as an investment in alternative income generating activities, they are most often used for the daily needs as it is difficult to establish alternative livelihoods and many people state that the loss of land for agriculture and herding leads to poverty. It does. Also, the construction and production phase of a mine and the effects on the environment and living conditions of the people last much longer than the actual compensation payments. Exactly. Okay, I stayed in northwestern Pennsylvania from the oil drilling that happened there in the 1960s, and the water, the aquifer was still ruined in 2012. So and that's in America. Okay, disgusting. Since orpilage is generally prohibited on mining concession areas, the local population is deprived of yet another important source of income. So in other words, they can't even do gold mining themselves if a big industrial one you know, like ore zone is around. Even though the mining management as well as government officials make promises regarding employment opportunities in the industrial mines, people strongly express their dissatisfaction with the few positions being created and that non-locals are advantaged in being employed by the mine. They bring in foreign workers, in other words. This happens all the time. Happened with the fracking down in Pennsylvania, my former home, home state. It's crazy. They ship in, in, in foreign employees. <clears throat> Unemployment and poverty, sometimes even hunger, are the consequences of the combination of the loss of lively, livelihoods and the lacking compensation and employment options by the mining operators. <clears throat> Involuntary resettlement. Thousands of households are reloca relocated to newly constructed villages for the benefit of the construction of, or extension of a mine. Problems of the resettlement process include a lack of transparency and information, disruption of the social structure by the new arrangement of the houses and the villages, and longer distances for the daily routines of the residents. Another concern is related to damaging effects and increasing health problems. The work of the mine includes dynamite blasts in order to crush the gold-containing rock. These provoke ground motion and bring dust and rocks into the village, which leads to increased respiratory illness. Okay. Dynamite is being used, in other words, by the big industry guys. And let me just show you this. Um, <clears throat> Burkina Faso gold mine blast kills 60. 60 people killed in this explosion. And I don't think that was the artisanal type of people that were doing the use of dynamite because they don't use dynamite in their traditional way of gold mining. They do it all by hand, completely by hand. But again, you say, what? Well, but you know, that it could have been there and it, maybe they did it wrong or something. Okay, but then you go down here in the article and it says, last month at least 13 people were killed in a huge blast in neighboring Ghana after a truck carrying explosives to a gold mine collided with a motorbike. I mean, do we really want trucks up here in northern Maine driving around with explosives? A moose runs out, you know, it happened from a motorbike. What if a moose runs out? Remember last year, there was a, a moose that was hit by a log truck. Just Again, just a few miles north of us right here. What happens if they're carrying around heavy, you know, high explosives, I should say, and they, get, they hit a moose? Or hit one of us, people that lives locally here? It's insane. <clears throat> um, 
Furthermore, the detonations cause damage to the houses, even the newly built ones, and produce a lot of noise and a, even a feeling of earthquakes. Residents also complain about, about pollution due to the use of toxic products or waste left close to the village. Furthermore, defunct tailing dams or the spillover of chemical products contaminate the groundwater. Exactly. Well, but Wolfton's going to be different. They, they did it in Burkina Faso, but, you know, this time it'll be different. We'll do it in northern Maine, and you'll never notice it. It'll be so green and so wonderful. Yeah. The reallocation of land and the damaging effects of the mines also impact cultural sites, such as graves or religious sites, that become inaccessible or are threatened by the mine operations. This has led to conflicts, for example, around the Karma Mine, which where dynamite blasts are viewed as a threat to the nearby Ramatulay uh, Mosque. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. An important site of pilgrimage. <clears throat> Unfulfilled promises and repression. I mean, Wolfton's already lying. They've already lied to local people here. They're already lying. And, oh, you know, the native people, they don't really oppose us or whatever else. Yes, they do. And they haven't even talked to the native people. The meeting that I was at over at the Lumberman's Museum, the representatives from the Penobscot Nation and the Holton Band of Maliseets were here right in town, and they said, Wolfton has never even talked to us, even though they publicly state that, oh, there's, you know, we're fine, we get along, or whatever. They're liars. Even though, according to Burkhanabi law, mining companies need to obtain the consent of the local population regarding the plans to construct a mine in their vicinity and the potential re repercussions on their lives and environment, many residents in the neighborhood of the mines claim not to have been informed. It's Again, this is going on. It's exactly what's going on. Ron Little did it with Orzone in Africa. Now he's doing it with Wolfton here in northern Maine. Apart from the lack of prior information, they also complain about unfulfilled promises. Often the mine management attempts to counter the negative impacts of the mine by, using, by promising infrastructure developments. That's what they're doing here. And employment during the construction process as well as later in the mine. They're lying, in other words. However, these promises do not materialize for the vast majority of the population. When residents stand up for their rights, they often experience repression by state authorities and operators. Repression includes unlawful dismissals of those who unionize. <clears throat> Demonstrations and roadblocks are countered with physical violence by police or special security forces, and protesters are arbitrarily arrested. Generally, residents feel that the mining companies are taking from them without giving enough back. Many people are under the impression that the mine management and the government are in cahoots. No, they wouldn't do that. I mean, they, they wouldn't be trying to pay off local, you know, town officials here or anything else. And Wolfton, a number of years ago, donated some money to the Pioneer Days here. I think it was 2019, if I remember correctly. They donated some money to, you know, some local town things and whatever else, just just to show a goodwill, of course, nothing more than that. A housemaker from the village in Maguo, uh, close to the Besabuli uh, mine states, I ask the government and the mine not to turn their backs while we suffer. <clears throat> um, the mine management and the government. The affected populations try to engage with the mine management and the local national and national authorities to demand local employment and income generating opportunities. They also seek compensation payments, investment in local infrastructures, and access to artisanal mining, mining sites, microcredit schemes, and training. Despite repression, the affected populations use different ways of addressing the actors they see in charge. Letters, meetings, petitions, press conferences, demonstrations, marches, roadblocks, and sit-ins are just some of the highly diverse array of strategies that the residents employ to raise their claims. I mean, do we really want this in Maine? Here in America, I mean, they're doing it over in the third world country to the poor African people, but now they want to do it here in America. This Canadian company wants to come here and start pushing local residents around, like me, and many others in the area. The Glucon's uh, country report offers a rare perspective on how local populations experience industrial mining in Burkina Faso. Contrary to the promises of mining companies and the government agencies, the qualitative analysis of the survey shows that the opening of mines in the country have not improved the living conditions of the residents. Instead, the findings reveal that the grave social and environmental impacts of the industrial mines 
are at the expense of residents. One peasant from Taparco in the north of the country summarizes, they have taken everything from us, our land, our jobs, our health, our peace, and our hope. Ron Little, involved in it. Oh, I think it'll be different this time. Yeah, well, uh, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result, is the definition of insanity. Okay, here's a, another article saved as a PDF. This is from northernminer.com. Orzone takes a beating after bumbled Bumbore resource. Huh. They bumbled the part of their operation? No, I'm sure they wouldn't do that. Shares of Orzone Gold were pummeled after the company revealed that its flagship Bombore project in Burkina Faso, West Africa, contains much less gold than previously reported. Exactly what they're doing here. This is a high yield thing. This is going to be the biggest one in, in North America. It's all this. They're lying. They're lying. Did the same thing over in Africa. Ron Little's company. And their, their shares fell in their company because they lied. On August 22nd, the company said the preliminary results show a 30% decline in global reserves and resources. Uh -huh. The revelation abruptly halted the positive momentum Orzone had been building over the past few months. The company received its mining permit on August 12th and said it aimed to start construction during the second quarter of 2017. Orzone also completed a $26.5 million equity financing in July, where it issued $26.5 million shares to a syndicate of underwriter, underwriters co-led by Raymond James and National Bank. So these guys have deep pockets. That's the whole thing. Uh, Altius and Kinross are the two biggest financiers of uh, Wolfton currently. But there's another one that could come in in the future, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. That's really, really scary. There's a picture there. The company was forced to withdraw a series of technical documents, including a 2015 feasibility study, 2014 preliminary economic assessment and the suspect resource estimate which was released in mid-2013. They were forced to withdraw a series of technical documents? You mean like they did here with the Land Use Planning Commission? See, they've been doing the same thing. They don't know what they're doing. The major culprit appears to be different modeling techniques by two engineering firms. The calculations were done three years ago by SRK Consulting, while the newer technical work is being led by Roscoe Postle Associates. Though Orzone cites the exclusion of environmentally sensitive areas and two small satellite deposits set aside for artisanal miners, it appears that more conservative methods are the main cause for the drop in in situ gold ounces. Employees, okay, they're, they're just talking about caption about the picture. The company states that the previous estimate had no boundary between the low grade and the waste domains, while the 2016 model has no grade modeling within the waste domain and limits the grade modeling with a low grade domain. Bambore's 2013 resource estimate was 140 million tons, grading 1.01 grams gold per ton for 4.6 million ounces across all ore types. The technical document underpinned the feasibility study based on oxide and transitional reverse or reserves of 60 million tons, grading 0.76 gram gold for 1.47 million contain ounce of gold. Uh, Orzone's previous plan envisioned a two-stage build that would begin with a hybrid uh, heap leach, carbon in leach operation. The initial mining phase would have produced 135 ounces of gold annually. Uh, over an eight-year life at all-in sustaining costs of U.S. $678 per ounce. Uh, capital expenses for the first phase were pegged at U.S. $250 million. Given our recent permitting success with the project, this news is an unfortunate setback. However, it does not diminish our enthusiasm and commitment to building a mine at Bombore. Orzone President and CEO Ron Little said in the news release, Management did not respond to a request for comment by press time. Um, Orzone said its updated resource should be ready by early September. Do you see how the, it's the exact same wording of what they're trying to do here in Wolfton? Well, we, you know, we had to withdraw our, you know, thing that we were sent, submitting to um, the Land Use, Land Use Planning Commission. And it's an unfortunate setback. But uh, it's not going to diminish our enthusiasm and commitment to building a mine at 
picket mount. Yeah. The company intends to revise and release feasibility economics for initial production as soon as possible to determine the next stage of the development for the project, exactly as they're doing here. The company's shares dropped 50%. You can read all that. I'm not going to, for sake of time. Um, we, we recently had taken a constructive view on the stock based on feasibility study economics, the potential for the project to advance towards production after receiving permits, and the upside through further evaluation of the sulfide resources, uh, break, break minus rights. However, the likely negative resource update appears to place the viability of the project in question until the feasibility study is revised. These guys don't know what they're doing. Um, and then it just talks about you know the rest there. That's it for the article. But uh, yeah. Uh, but let's get back to this thing here. Here you can see this is actually a, um, I'll play a little bit of this. Uh, this is back when he was president and CEO of Orzone. You can see their symbol down here. I'll play it so you can see that. It already that we've got one of the largest deposits in West Africa that's not developed. Uh, we've <laughs> largest uh, deposits in West Africa that's not developed. Same thing he says about Pickett Mountain. And you watch this interview, and you watch the ones about Wolfton and, and Pickett Mountain, and it's the same kind of speech. We just need the permit. We had to take away the feasibility study, and we're looking, you know, it was a, it was a minor setback, but we're looking to try to get back in there. And, and uh, it's the biggest deposit ever. We know it is, we think, you know, absolutely terrible. But uh, listen to a little bit of this here. Um, we'll play a little bit of this interview with Ron Little. And again, he talks about his involvement with Orzone and Burkina Faso. Maybe you know you as an engineer as well as a geologist, but mainly probably as the CEO of Orzone Resources. Uh, and that one, I believe you sold for about $350 million to Iron Gold? Correct. Yeah. So, you know, it's kind of this, you know, we were, ironically, I, was, I felt I was the last mover in Burkina Faso in about 1997-98. We were really the last junior in the door, and uh, you know, within a few years, we, you know, gold price dropped, and I just started consolidating properties there, and it turned out we picked up the biggest deposit in the country, and within, call it another ten years, we turned that into a five million plus ounce deposit, and it's, you know, it's now the mine is turning out four hundred thousand ounces a year. So it was a, uh, you know, we had a... At what cost to the people? We'll see, you know, the suffering of the few for the benefit of the many. A, a very successful team, and we stuck with it, and we had a new mining code there. There's a lot of similarities. We, we... He just said there's a lot of similarities. So it isn't just my, oh, you're just, you know, making things up and whatever else. You have a, an attitude and whatever you're... Yeah, and, if anybody's out there watching this, I'm not a liberal Democrat tree hugging, you know, greeny or something like that. Not that I have, you know, saying that, you know, they can stand against this thing too. But the point is, it's this little thing that constantly gets pointed. And, oh, it must be anybody that's against mining in Northern Maine must be some kind of a liberal. No, actually, I'm a conservative Christian. So just want to get that out there. We were really the first, you know, the biggest debt facility approved for the country because Burkina, you know, was one of the ten poorest countries in the world, and it was an old. And you, you actually made it poor. French colony, etc. So it's, uh, it was a great learning ground, and 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 we were taken over, and we spun out another big project, which Orzone is is currently building now. So it was a great learning experience. For what? To come and try to do the same thing in America. That's what they're doing. So, uh, just going to show a little tiny bit of this one. I'm not going to show a lot, but just the, you know, for those of us that live in the area, this is what we'd be facing, this kind of stuff. Yeah, that's what I want to hear in my local area, you know. And it goes into this just heartbreaking, this woman, and she goes back and she's showing 
this area where she grew up and how it's just it's gone now and it's there's streams that are gone and and uh the whole mountain is gone it used to look like this over here and now it's just gone just absolutely terrible and of course the um there's the waste field that's there poisoning the aquifer they get into it this woman here is talking about they can't drink the water and they're from the faucet there's an old man in their area that uh, he's blind as a result of that water. I've seen it. You know, I've been in around that stuff. Here you have uh, Peru. Uh, impacts of mining. This is the African Coalition for Corporate Accountability. Uh, because again, these these guys, these big mining companies, they come in and they say, "Oops, hey, sorry about that. We made some had some problems. Uh, yeah, one of our trucks blew up, killed a bunch of people." Dynamite blew this up and killed a bunch of you know people and whatever. Had a few spills. Oops, sorry about that. And then they walk away. Again, when I lived in northwestern Pennsylvania, we would walk around through the woods, my wife and I, near uh, the town of Bradford. Eldred was the town we were in. And we'd walk around through the woods. There's still pipes, rusted old pipes from when they were doing the oil drilling, drilling in the area back in the 1960s. Still old pumps with the motor still in them. Oh, but they'll, they'll clean everything up. No, they won't. doesn't make any sense. But I just want to play one part of it right here. And uh, listen to what this woman says here. We have now realized that we were tricked before we were relocated. We put the cart before the horse. We were gullible. We swallowed the bait, hook, line, and sinker. They fell for the promises of jobs and money and everything else that would be brought to the area. Yeah, it's a beautiful country. And now it's been destroyed. We are now wiser from our earlier experiences. That's what I want to see just to the north of where I live. Uh, I don't think so. But look at that. Yeah, anybody out there too, and they, they talk a little bit later on here about, oh, it's just a bunch of liberals from down south that they're the ones that are complaining. We have huge local support, which they don't. But anybody, you want to come to northern Maine to the northern entrance to the Appalachian Trail, Baxter State Park, Mount Katahdin and everything else, and hike Mount Chase and Climb Mount Chase, which is, you know, a little bit away from Mount Katahdin. And you want to look and see that? Where a mountain used to be? We haven't got any economic benefit from the mine. We haven't gotten any economic benefit from mining. We thought maybe it was going to be a blessing, but a curse. We thought maybe it was going to be a blessing, but a curse. Absolutely horrible. I mean, look what they did to the mountain. This is why our brothers, we are telling you what's happening to us so that it doesn't happen to you. Watch the other videos in this series to learn how communities have addressed the problems you heard about here. I'll stop it there. That was a mountain. A beautiful mountain that God created people that are involved in this they will be standing before God and they will answer for their crimes but um, let me go to another thing here really quickly um, just hear what this liar says this is in February February 5th 2021 let's hear what he says ends is stacked up in that footwall area and that's where we are gonna focus this year um, Focus, you've raised two million bucks in December. I get you mentioned Altius have come back in, which is great. Kinross yeah. too. Um, so that's good for the money. It's also quite good because it shows that you've got a couple of big backers to what is, you know, you're still a $40 million company. Share price up 50 cents from when we spoke. So that's all good news. But you kind of need that support when it comes to this kind of 
rezoning and you know making uh, people accept that perhaps Maine is open for business or helping Maine tell the story that they are open for business when it comes to mining. Yeah, no, I'd say the number one concern for every producer is, you know, am I wasting my time on exploration because I'll never get a mining permit? And there's only, you know, you're down to a few like a Kinross who have permitted mines in places like Washington who went through a lot of hoops, but they got their permit. And, you know, right away they said to us, look, we're not as concerned about the permitting at all. We love the margins that Pickett Mountain presents, but we need size. So if this doubles. Okay, we need size. If this doubles, they want more land. They're going to take more land. There are triples in size. This would be a mine in our backyard. So naturally, we would like to build it. So that's, that's why a company like us tries to make it bigger, is effectively, you know, it helps, it helps to be in play, as it were, to raise money at a higher price. You know, you have to have a team like we do to build a mine, but you still need that takeover premium. And, and that, that can be greatly improved once we get through the rezoning application. Well, yeah, absolutely, because I think it's going to make it difficult for people to look at you as a company which is ever going to get into production. You know, why would you go and invest in that? I mean, Kinross are confident, but it's not a lot of money for them. It's not a lot of money for Altius either. So it's, it's, a, it's a sort of tip of the hat more than anything else. But do you think that is going to be enough to help you in your conversations locally? Yes. So, you know, you kind of cued me on local. We have tremendous support around the project because we're in remote northern Maine. Most people are in the timber business. It's, it's a difficult, uh, unpredictable lifestyle at the moment, and more jobs is critical. So we've got, you know. Uh, speaking for myself and a lot of the people that live up here, we didn't move here for jobs. We moved here for the beauty of the area. And that's what we're going to fight for huge support locally for this the only yeah they have huge support locally for this okay watch watch he attacks the whole liberal thing here little plays a little divide and conquer thing check this out only activism towards the project would be down in the city against people who i think no matter what will be anti-mining but <laughs> okay the only people that are against this are from down south okay here you have the main.gov website, Land Use Planning Commission Zoning Petition 779, Wolfton Mount Chase, LLC. They withdrew their petition, but all that they're trying to do right now, by the way, they're trying to come back in and say, we want to mine on the Pickett Mountain property that they purchased, well, that their investors purchased, and they want to find another place to put their, the, one woman said at the town meeting, she said, Wolfton's toilet. In other words, their tailings facility, where they take all the toxic sludge from their mining operation and then they store it someplace. You see, that was the big problem. They couldn't store it back there because it's unorganized territory. They would have never gotten permission. So now they're trying to find another place to put the toxic waste and then they can do their mining. So a bunch of crooks. But um, we have October 19th, 2021, the huge support, huge support that he said, there. huge support from the local people. Well, right here, this is me. First and foremost, my letter I wrote against them to the Land Use Planning Commission. Um, so you can pause it and read it. Here's another one. Um, I'm writing to express my opposition to the rezoning. Another one. Would you please do all that you can to stop any forward movement towards a mine? All right. Um, I'm writing to indicate my opposition to the rezoning of land near Pickett Mountain for metal mining by Wolfton. I'm writing you today to voice my opposition to Wolfton Resources Corporation's rezone request in the Pickett Mountain area. I urge you to reject Wolfton's rezoning proposal for its Pickett Mountain property over and over and over again. And look what we have, 721 pages of people most from Maine, and I didn't see very many, if any, that were in uh, support of what Wolfton is doing. So you have, you know, um, he just lied. We have huge local support, huge support for this thing. They're liars. No, they don't. 
No, they don't. The vast majority of people, uh, people that have any kind of a thinking ability at all, they're against this whole thing. They know what it's going to do. I mean, I mean look what they did in Africa. They are bumbling their things. Oh, we thought it was big, but it's you know actually a lot less than what we were saying. You know, we just have to get this permit. And we're you know this is an unfortunate setback. And yeah, and I don't understand how anybody could be for this nonsense. But uh, and by the way, you can go back here to this um, thing here on the main main.gov. Just you can go there and type in the. You know, LUPZ zoning for you know petition 779 for Wolfton Mount Chase LLC, and you can go down through. You can look at all their different proposal stuff right there. I'm not going to go through it all, but again, public comments right there. More public comments, more public comments, um, agency comments, public comments, um, public comments, updated public comments, public comments. Um, public comments. There's a lot of public comments there, and you can read what people have to say. Again, public comments. People are very much opposed to it, and a lot of them are local um, guide services and things. Um, you know, lodges and whatever in the area where people can come and fish and hunt. I mean, if this whole thing goes through, they're finished. They're done. You're going to be guiding people, and oh, well, you can't eat the fish that you catch because the waters are all toxic here now. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense at all. But um, so, just trying to think here, what's the next thing I need to cover? Uh, which one is it? Okay, this one. Let's listen to a little bit more here finding and developing minds. So, you know, very much, I'm a guy who wants to build something if I can, but if a bigger company wants to buy us out and that's the best thing for shareholders, we can do that too. Well, if a big company wants to buy us out, hmm. Let's listen now to this right here, talking about Wolfton. Why did Wolfton resources drop? All right. Um, Let's listen to this real quick here. Listen to what this guy says, who's in an, uh, another video, him and Ron Little sitting next to each other, him, you know, John Kaiser here interviewing Ron Little. Check this out. $68 million of that was due to Neo Lithium Corp, which owns the Tre Quebradas uh, Lithium Project uh, in Argentina, which has been taken through the pre-feasibility study. It received a... $960 million Canadian friendly takeover bid from Zijin Mining, the Chinese uh, mining company that has done a number of takeovers uh, involving uh, Canadian resource juniors. Now, this is... Uh, really? So Zijin Mining, right here is their website. And they have done a number of takeovers of junior mining companies in Canada. Think about what you just saw there and heard. Ron Little says, we wouldn't mind selling out to a bigger company. One of them is owned by communist China. Wouldn't that be nice? And I'm sure that communist China, with all their destruction of the environment in their own country, I'm sure that they would come here and take really good care of this nation. I'm sure they would just have absolute respect, absolute respect for the local people, the local wildlife and everything else, the, the crystal clear waters up here and, you know, all the pristine trout waters. And yeah, China would take real good care of it, I'm sure. I mean, doesn't that horrify you? Everybody needs to stand against this. Just unreal. Uh, let's see here. What was the other thing I wanted to show? Um, you say, well, you know, he would have more respect and everything though uh, for the people up here and, and things. Wouldn't he? No. Whatever pushed around the people of Africa, kicked them off their ancestral native lands, destroyed their culture, the agrarian lifestyle that they led in Africa. Just absolutely horrible. Um, but you know, what a perfect racist thing to do, you know, come into the country and oh, you're just lower than us. You're just Nothing. Uh, we'll have to destroy you and your culture and the lands that you've lived on for thousands of years. And, you know, that's perfectly fine. And 
but now hey he can do it to his own you know white people or whatever else and, and to the of course the indigenous people in the area I'm not trying to exclude them but sure why not okay so there's exploration upside in, in, in this you talk yeah. in the powerpoint uh, about securing additional high grade, pro high grade projects is that through the drill bed or are you talking about securing additional properties in the region yeah I'm glad you asked that as well like we've we have been actually working on other acquisitions and some of them are you know Maine is Maine is unique in the fact that it's all mineral rights you don't go stake a claim from the government and we've found some of the properties that we like have mineral rights that have been, you know, uh, passed on in a, in a will or a trust. And to get the final piece can be very long and, and, and slow as you track down who owns them and try to get them to commit to what everybody else is committed to. So he just said that they want to get other properties. And if you saw my other video I did, that I, I actually did over a year ago, but I just released it on here on YouTube on my channel yesterday. Um, he actually talked at one point, one of the um, interviews that he did, he actually talked about um, just trespassing onto people's properties, and there's really not many laws against us, and you can just take a grub hoe and just kind of dig and see what kind of rocks they have on their properties. So for all the people here in the local area that think, oh, they're going to bring jobs, it'll be wonderful, our children will have jobs, you believe the propaganda like the poor people in Africa did when these guys came and raped their land? Um, oh, we'll have great jobs and things. No, they actually want to take over the whole area. They want to destroy everything. If you have any value at all on your property, we'll just kind of make it so miserable that you'll leave or we can resettle you. You know, I guess what put us on reservations or something, perhaps. Just we'll resettle you and then, you know, we'll just kind of go in there and mine your property too. But listen to what this guy says about the people of Maine. Look at Ron's uh, reaction. So uh, I'd say a small negative in the short term, but there are other quality assets that will eventually be be a part of our portfolio. I bet they're cheap. No one, no one wants to be in Maine, do they? It sounds like. <laughs> no one wants to be in Maine, do they? It sounds like. But it's cheap up there. Nice little insult there little city boys in their ivory towers that just go and send in their hordes of workers that they kill off with the toxic chemicals and everything else and then they just sit there and they rake in all the money real nice so far <laughs> I would say you know you know it's funny when you, you'd ask that because I thought you know I'm gonna get on here and really promote how great Maine is but we're really enjoying being the only guys there right <laughs> Yeah. So those of us who have seen pollution, who have seen corruption, and we come up here for the peace that this area affords and the tranquility and the beauty of nature. Oh, well, we'll just kind of laugh at those people. They're, they're a lot like those peasants over in Africa that we just took their land and, you know, their ancestral property, ancestral properties from them. We'll just kind of push them out. Everybody has to stand against us. If you believe in any kind of freedom or whatever else, you need to stand against this thing. We'll talk about some solutions here in a bit. Right, like uh, we do have that 30 kilometer belt and fortunately that's given us a lot of time to build up a great rapport with the local people and the great rapport with the local people. No, you haven't. Yeah, and there, there are sellouts in this area. I'll tell you that I, you know, we're looking into who all they are. But there are people that say, oh, I think this is a good thing. You know, we can kind of get used to the pollution and, you know, there's good money in it, you know. Yeah. And it's, you know what it's doing? It's already causing strife and division. People that used to be up here and just friendly with each other and everything else and just everybody just kind of minds their own business. Now, all of a sudden, it's creating that anger. It's only going to get worse with time. But you see, that's what mining does for an area. It's toxic on all sides. The local companies, you know, our next door neighbor is mm -hmm. one of the bigger timber families in the States. And, and I would say he's gotten comfortable with the mining guys that have come to town. And I think that's really going to do us well in the permitting process because we're, we're, we're being good custodians and we're hiring local mm -hmm. people first. And, you know, we're trying to, we're trying to.
They remember they lie over and over again. Well, we'll, we'll be hiring local people. They never do. They never do. They'll get a couple of people here and there, and then that's it. Why? Because just simple basic uh, business here. Okay. If you take a local person that has no clue how to do mining or run the equipment or whatever the special equipment for mining, you take that local guy. You have to spend hours and lots of money training him. He's not going to come in and do the training for free. He wants to be paid for the training. So you have to pay him to get him up to the place where some guy that is familiar with the machine from out of state, he already knows how to do it. You can bring him in right away. It's a simple basic business practice here. But see, they have to lie with their little propaganda to say, oh, everything's, you know, we'll, we'll have lots of local jobs. We'll bring lots of local jobs to the economy. They do it over and over again. To be maintenance here, even though we're deemed a Canadian company, you know, we're going to end up building an American subsidiary, right? Like everybody we try to hire here from here forward is going to take the company towards a U.S. company, right? Do you like lobster? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do like lobster. The lobster rolls are fantastic, but, you know, we are about three hours from the coast, so I don't want people to get the idea that we're laying on the beach and eating lobster rolls. <laughs> sounds like a nice yeah. life to me. Um being uh, wealthy and whatever else, you know, just taking from the local economy sounds like a nice life. Well, why don't you live in a place like this? Oh, it's okay because I'm just a peasant, I guess, apparently to these guys. So I think that's about all I'm going to be sharing from this video. But um, what can we do about this, um, quite frankly, very evil man? Uh, and his plans for this beautiful area of God's creation. Um, whether you believe in God or not uh, is irrelevant uh, in terms of, well, it's not irrelevant, but what I'm saying is everybody has to stand against this thing, no matter what your belief. Okay? Um, what they've done to the people of Africa over there, uh, you know, the, the horrors and things of of the way that these people have been forced to live and I mean just the here it is that's what I was looking for and I mean you watch this video I, I didn't play the whole video but you know watch it and you know the environments have been the environment has been destroyed people's fields have been taken from them we have to do something to fight this so um, you can contact the town offices up here Patton um, I'm not sure if Hershey has a town office. I think it's controlled by Patton. Um, but Sherman and all the towns in this area up here just simply say, do not allow this thing. It's wrong. Write to people in Maine. And most importantly, share my videos. Okay, this is a long one. I'm sorry I had to put a lot of documentation into this thing um, just to show what they did in Africa, how they destroyed the people over there, their culture and their lands and, you know, just horrible, uh, heartbreaking stuff. And now they want to do it here in America. And people everywhere have to stand against this. Um, I mean, if you have any love at all for nature, please stand against this. So that is going to be it. Uh, thank you very much for watching. And to those who are saved out there, please do pray for us. Uh, we need to pray that God stops this whole thing. A lot of people were praying about it the first time around when Wolfton withdrew their... Um, their thing that they were doing there, their proposal. And it was a great praise and very thankful for that. But they came back and they're trying it again. Uh, so not very good. Uh, we need to stop this thing. And quite frankly, there needs to be laws passed that northern Maine will never be mined. There are enough mines around this country, enough uh, hydraulic fracking that goes on. Um, damage from that, damage from oil drilling, damage from a lot of this stuff. It's just toxic. It's terrible. There's plenty of evidence to show that. There's no such thing as a mine that does not leave any waste behind. It doesn't poison some water system or, or whatever else. There's no such thing. It's never been documented in history. And they can't come up with some kind of a new thing that, oh, it will be perfect and whatever else. So please do pray for us. That will be it. Thank you very much for watching.